this is Jennifer Norris Hale with Mission Motherhood and this is another episode of Motherhood Behind the Scenes. Um, today I am so excited uh, to welcome one of my uh, colleagues, uh, friends, um, motherhood, uh, journey women <laughs> in this community, um, Christy. Um, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you. I don't even know why I looked at my notes. <laughs> Who do we have today? Who do we have today? <laughs> um, yeah, but so Christy is a mom of two little girls, mm -hmm. um, ages four and two. Um, we met, I think, prior to your second daughter yeah. uh, being born. And um, I've always just admired your passion in the community for serving moms in general. Um, and whether it's through photography or as a doula or just always even from like the mud like the mission motherhood standpoint mm -hmm. always like showing up for you know what we're trying to do and yeah. um, the message we're trying to send to so i appreciate you being here thank you thanks for having me <laughs> of course um but why don't we kind of like you know start from the beginning yeah. um what why don't you tell me a little bit about you know the the big you know, scope of our conversation today is mm -hmm. really kind of mothering and experiencing motherhood with uh, a chronic illness. Mm -hmm. um, you have type 1 diabetes. Yeah. Um, so why don't we kind of talk about that journey from, you know, young Christy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to how that has kind of like impacted, you know, being yeah. a mom. Yeah. All the things. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I got diagnosed when I was 15 and, um, I, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of people have like that time frame in their heads as like a time that was like a big turning point in their life and it really made a huge impact on who they are and I honestly feel like when I was diagnosed it just I I think I had told you earlier like I um, I really thought that I had it before I was diagnosed so I had already prepared myself for a diagnosis because yeah. I wasn't feeling well for months and so um, because I was like emotionally prepared for like something big, I wanted something to fix me essentially. So mm -hmm. I felt so much better when I was diagnosed and I didn't really have an emotional response to it. Mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, this is what I have, move forward. I was old enough to sort of like take charge of it on my own. I didn't have to have like everyone, you know, rally around me to help me like figure out how to take insulin and all this stuff. Of course my parents were there for that, but <laughs> it was just easy for me to say like, this is what I need to do to feel better and move forward. And mm -hmm. so for a, probably a solid like eight to 10 years, I just did it. It didn't feel like a big thing in my life. It wasn't something I really complained about a ton because I was like, this is just what makes me feel good. It's like brushing my teeth. Like you just do that. Mm -hmm. You take insulin after you eat food. Um, and obviously it was a huge shift, but like it didn't really, I feel like change who I was as a person mm -hmm. and shift my like identity, honestly, until yeah reaching the time frame where I wanted to become a mom mm -hmm. and realizing like how that would impact me mm -hmm. um, and my future children and my family as a whole, that is when I started to have like sort of some struggles surrounding my diagnosis and realizing like, oh, I don't necessarily think I dealt with the diagnosis up until this point right. because I was just like, yeah, it's just fine. It just is what it is. And one of the things, and I don't think that I mentioned, maybe I did, mm -hmm. um, was that you're a doula yes. as well. Yeah. And was that, was that part of your plan as well? Or did that yeah. happen kind of after the fact? Because a yeah. lot of the women that we speak to become doulas after the fact yes. because of their experience. Yeah, so. yeah. I 100% was not planning on being a birth doula. I didn't, don't think I even knew what a doula was when mm -hmm. I had my first baby. Um, and yeah, it was not a part of the plan at all. I was a photographer, so I had been a family photographer for years. Um, and so I started doing some birth photography, but I wasn't planning on doing any sort of like birth work per se. Um, and yeah, I definitely feel like, I mean, I wouldn't be a doula today mm -hmm. if I wasn't type one diabetic because that shaped how I viewed like a birth experience for a mom and mm -hmm. how I wanted to be a part of that experience with them yeah. um, because of the people I surrounded myself with, which yeah. second pregnancy was with a doula. <laughs> um, so yeah, it definitely changed my perspective on like how moving forward, I wanted moms to feel cared for during their pregnancy. And right now you deal more with high risk moms or yeah, type yeah. one or kind of like the whole gamut or more specifically? Yeah. If, I, I deal with all like pregnancy and birth because I don't, I don't really want to say no to someone because they don't have a diagnosis, yeah. but my passion for it was going in, helping people who are in a situation like me or similar, mm -hmm. um, to feel empowered the way that I did by the care team that I was surrounded by that mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I had earlier on. 
And that was the second time or the first time? Yes. So the first, my first pregnancy, I did not have a birth doula. Again, I didn't really even know what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, but moving into that, um, I, I had definitely been, I'd just been with an established care team, you know, that you see early on and you don't really think about like, oh, this is the person who's going to deliver my baby. It's just mm -hmm. women's health. Mm -hmm. And I had been continually like told, I guess the story of fear was, mm -hmm. was placed into me that mm -hmm. you have a diagnosis. And so your diagnosis puts you in this box mm -hmm. that makes it so that you don't necessarily have options. You're just, this is your lot in life. You have type one diabetes, so you have to have a C-section between 36 and 38 weeks because you're high risk. And that was just like what I was told across the board by mm -hmm. pretty much every medical professional in my life, which early on, I was just kind of like, okay, I'll take that for what it is and move forward. But when I started looking into like, I want to have a baby, I want to try and conceive soon. Like, why is this my lot in life if I'm very healthy? Yeah. And so I started looking for um, a care team that would like instill the empowerment in me to mm -hmm. like be healthy and do things naturally and the right way. And however, like I wanted to do it based on what I felt about myself and my body, like knowing I'm healthy enough to do this. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like I'm healthy enough to do this without having much education, <laughs> yeah. surely someone who like can see my situation will also believe that for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I set out like the year prior to deciding we wanted to get pregnant to just find that care team. Um, so I went, I had appointments with three different doctors okay. and basically just knew I was gonna go into each of them and say like, I'm type one diabetic. I you know, have a goal to just like do everything as naturally as possible, understanding that I'm high risk. So how would you care for me? Mm -hmm. Like, how does that wow. come out? That's, I mean, that's pretty, you know. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and that was before I was a birth doula. So I didn't really have any education on like yeah. what might be right or wrong or what might be like, I don't know, like a taboo subject. Like it yeah, just yeah. was like, I, wa I went in just saying like, I will come out of there either feeling good about this person or feeling bad. Mm -hmm. And I did. I had... Um, one interview that I felt horribly about and then I didn't even make it to the third because the second person was just I left in tears in a good way oh, like okay. he was like you're type 1 diabetic that's fine like you can have you can totally you can do this is what oh, he said wow. and I remember him looking at me and saying you can totally do this and I was like you're literally the first person <laughs> who's told me I could do this anyway you know like yeah. even more than what everyone else is telling me yeah. and so I just felt super empowered even in the first I wasn't even pregnant at that moment yeah. but just knowing that he was saying like we can care for you and you can care for yourself and we can be a team mm -hmm. and we're not putting you in this box mm -hmm. and we want you to succeed in whatever your goals and dreams are for your pregnancy and birth which just didn't feel like the case anywhere else mm -hmm. um so yeah, moving forward, I was super, super thankful that I had found them before pregnancy because I moved into my first pregnancy then with a lot less fear. Mm -hmm. I still had fear based on what the past medical professionals had yeah, told me, right. which I think in that way, it kind of shaped and molded my first experience, though even though I had someone who was empowering me, it was like a step up mm -hmm. from what I had before, but I had to keep taking the steps to get more empowered and more um I'm sorry, more empowered and less afraid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And even just comfortable with the idea or yeah. the reality of the idea. Okay. Like, oh, I'm actually going to make this happen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like this is real life and I'm actually <laughs> pregnant. So we're really doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So what was, so you went through your first pregnancy, ended yeah. up having uh, like regular, she came full yeah. term. Yeah. Like, she, so we, it was one of those things that again, even though I found someone who was like, um, you know, you can totally do this. This is great. You can, we can push past all of the other things that we've said would be like a stereotypical, like this is what you have to do as type one diabetic. Um, we did continue to push that farther out. And so instead of being like induced at 36, so they had talked about induction versus C-section and I was like, okay, great. So instead of being induced at 36 weeks, we would just made it to 37 and then we made it to 38 and then we yeah. made it to 39. And I was like, everything is still healthy. And at that point at 39 weeks, I started to personally feel terrible myself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I thought now we're really pushing it and for what everyone has ever told me like I'm scared yeah. that I'm gonna make one wrong decision and that's gonna affect the life of my child yeah. and so at that point for me I was just like okay this is the farthest they said they would let me go I'm not gonna push it any farther mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with this yet even though I was okay with it it still came with the whole like I can't believe we're doing this even though I'm really healthy like mm -hmm. there was that in the back of my brain like 
why am I being induced if everything is fine? Yeah. But again, I don't regret any part of any of the journey because the first one was what it was and the second one was what it needed to be and each of them were a step forward in the yeah. right direction. Yeah. Um, and I was not emotionally prepared to push any more boundaries the first yeah. time. I had yeah. already pushed it far <laughs> enough. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had a um, healthy vaginal delivery. She was great. Everyone was totally fine. Yeah. Um, we walked into into motherhood a lot more empowered than I could have been if yeah. I felt like my dreams would have been squandered and squashed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. still walked into it feeling a little bit like, yeah. well, I had to have help to have this happen. Yeah. I didn't necessarily feel the full empowerment of like, I did this and I pushed far and all that. Yeah. But I, but I ha it was what I needed it to be for the yeah. first time around. Um, and postpartum was hard too, because then dealing with a chronic illness postpartum, like there's not really a support group. Well, there isn't a support group at all for type one <laughs> diabetes in pregnancy. It was all like gestational diabetes, which is so mm -hmm. great for during pregnancy for those moms who need that, but it's completely different okay. with my diagnosis and it sticks around. So it's yeah. not like, like ge with gestational diabetes, normally it fades off after pregnancy. And so for type one, like it, it actually just got worse postpartum because blood sugar is crazy with oh my breastfeeding goodness. and hormone levels dropping and like everything is just kind of a mess. And, yeah. and doctors are just kind of like, well, it's trial and error. Yeah. So there was a lot of fear surrounding my postpartum experience the first time around. And I'm lucky enough that I didn't deal with any like postpartum depression or anything, but I was definitely anxious. Mm -hmm. um, I was constantly anxious that like my blood sugar would drop and I would be the only one caring for my baby and then that would be it. And I'd be like passed out on the stairs yeah. and my baby's crying until my husband gets home. And like, yeah. it was just a scary sort of alone feeling on top of like the normal, you're a first time mom, it's scary and alone feeling. Like <laughs> yeah, that's a normal added, thing. Yeah. yeah. So just to add to that, I had a little bit of like, okay, can I do this? Is this possible for me to even have another baby? Because I don't know if I can even do this mm -hmm. with one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that was a little bit. And so and so after after everything you went through with her, you, mm -hmm. it was kind of like okay, this is where, because even as even as I'm listening to you talk, yeah. the empowerment piece is so critical, and that's such a critical piece as a doula. You know, yeah. like you think of a doula as supporting a mom and letting her know all the decisions that she has, mm -hmm. or all the choices that she has available, and empowering her to you know feel be in that space yeah and like even just as you talk it's mm -hmm. like the epitome of <laughs> what a doula yeah you know needs to be yeah to help support a mom and have um her birth not always doesn't always go to plan obviously but yeah um to be comfortable in it yeah um yeah so after your first daughter mm -hmm. um and that was when you kind of were like okay well this is was it after your second daughter that you had a doula and yeah, so after my first, I definitely felt like you said that like, oh, I picked the right care team for me to have an empowered birth. Yeah. Um, but I still knew that there was like more, mm -hmm. like there was more <laughs> to the story and more to the picture of like, I could have even it even better than I had it last time because everything went well and mm -hmm. it was totally fine. And I definitely did feel like the induction process itself was a little bit like, well, I just kind of went with it. Like I didn't really have much knowledge on what was going on, mm -hmm. but I did trust the care, my yeah. care team. So I was yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, but moving forward, I actually was doing birth photography and becoming a part of birth a lot. And so as I was doing that, I was starting to like realize that there were people who were birth doulas. And I was like, <laughs> I've never even heard of this. I have no idea what these people do. And so watching some, you know, fringe people, I didn't have any friends, but like in action with that, I was like, this is so awesome. Maybe I should certify to be a birth doula so I can just be a more active part of these births. So I'm not just a fly on the wall, mm -hmm. but I have some knowledge and some like, because like as a woman who's watching someone in labor, like it feels so, so sad to just be like, good luck, like no <laughs> yeah. help offered because you're like, I don't know if you want me to touch you or not to yeah, you. Like, yeah, yeah. so as a photographer, I always said like, I'm just a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not going to like, but that I wanted be... to be able to offer that. Right, right. Yeah. So I enrolled in the certification program and then three weeks later found out I was pregnant with my second. Mm -hmm. So I, my goal was to move into that, but I, I didn't really have like a practical understanding of what it was. It was just, I'm just going to learn more about birth. Okay. Um, and so as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I ended up being really sick with my second pregnancy and I was not with my first. Um, and so I kind of just like put it all in the back burner. Like I'm not going to take the time to learn any of this because I have to figure out how to survive. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to hire a birth doula because if that's what I want to do, I want someone like that to be there for me. Yeah. 
And so I hired the only birth doula I really knew. <laughs> and at the time, uh, apparently it was a God thing because she now runs an organization okay. that I'm a mentor, uh, like that I'm a mentor with, but I was a mentee under her. And like, it was just super, super cool to like be a part of that. Yeah. Um, but at the time, again, I didn't really know like, what they practically did. I just said, I want this person there to support me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went with the same care team with an additional person. And just having that e was even, like I said, a step up from the last mm -hmm. time where it was like, even though I trusted what happened before, it was like another person walking alongside me saying like, remember that you can make decisions. Remember that you can be cared for in the way that you want to be cared for. Even though you felt like the last time went well, it can be even better. Mm -hmm. And so, and also educating me on each step of the process. Mm -hmm. So like the induction the second time around, we pushed it a little bit farther and it went a lot smoother because yeah. there was a lot more education that I had surrounding like what each portion of it was and what it did. And I could choose each step. Like, I don't want to do that yet. Mm -hmm. Not just you enter and all the things happen to mm -hmm. you. It was like each step of the way I was empowered to make a decision even while I was being induced. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to up the Pitocin. I don't want to break my water yet. I don't, whatever it is. Yeah making it so that it took however long I basically chose for it to take, but I still had a more natural um, experience, not natural, it was, you know, it was medicalized, yeah. it's an induction, <laughs> yeah. but it felt softer yeah. and more at my own pace and yeah. less um, out of control, mm -hmm. which was an empowering experience because mm -hmm. I was able to like each step of the way, choose what I wanted to happen next. Yeah. With the same, um, you know, the same group that was caring for me and just a person, a doula, who mm -hmm. was sitting there with me in each step saying like, remember you can choose. Yeah. And I just, Last time around didn't necessarily feel like I had the choice because you just go with yeah. you just go with what your doctor yeah. says and that's great. <clears throat> and that's the thing too, like a lot of um, we just I don't uh, you know a, a lot of conversations are framed around not framed around but mm -hmm. kind of end up being centered around how we just don't prepare moms for birth. Yeah, you know, like yeah. that's why it's so critical for a doula yeah. to kind of be there and support a mom because you've while it might be a mom's first or third or whatever, yeah. it's your 30th, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And so you've, you've been through it. You can guide or you've been through it, you know, yeah. a few times before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just, you know, we don't, we don't prepare moms enough for birth or what yeah. their options are or um, what they can, you know, what happens next. So, yeah, um, and even in that instance, a lot of it too that I feel like I've, I've gathered over the time, you know, over the past however many births, I think it's been 36, I'm like eh, 30 ish, 30 -ish <laughs> births that I've attended is just the power of like, like I'm trying to figure out how to put this, um, helping mom trust herself mm -hmm. because there is a lot surrounding, like you said, education, mm -hmm. but then you can almost get in your head and just be yeah. like, well, I have to remember the things that I was educated on and mm -hmm. the facts surrounding each of this. And that you can get in your head and not yeah lean into your intuition and yeah. trust like what how do I feel about this mm -hmm. like does this portion of this process make me feel bad or good right. do I want to move forward with this do I not and especially and that's like back to the care team thing like do you feel like your provider is like empowering you do you feel like your care team even your doula if you've picked a doula and you don't feel like they're necessarily the right one for you I'm mm -hmm. not the right doula for everybody yeah. not at all I want each person who's with me to feel like I am their person. Right. Like, and if I'm not, then there's another duo that's your person. And yeah. same with providers, like they're not all gonna be the same. Mm -hmm. The person who I feel comfortable with might not be the person you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And even though I feel like, for sure, even though as a birth doula, I feel like there are providers that I'm like, these are the top notch ones. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna feel comfortable with them. And right. you have to feel like they're on your team, they're on your side, and they're there to let you make the decisions that you want to make and feel good about each of those steps yeah. because you're not going to feel like you had a controlled empowered experience if you didn't like make some of those decisions yeah. or let your body make those decisions right. you know let your body do what it's supposed to do right yeah. i i mean i fully and maybe i think we have talked about this like mm -hmm. my with my first birth was a disaster of an experience with yeah. the doula where it can create such a more empowering experience. So yeah. it, it's just important to, you know, like you just said, it might not be the right fit for everybody, mm -hmm. but, you know, just interviewing. Yeah. The fact that you, again, kind of going back to like um, advocating for yourself yeah. and having the ability to do that. And it can be, you know, living with, and I wonder, living with like a chronic um, like illness, Yeah. are you more comfortable you know, advocating mm -hmm. for yourself. 
Yeah, then, it then doesn't come like, it yeah. doesn't come naturally for me. I'm not the kind of person that naturally is like a challenger, like um, gonna like question what you have going on. I'm like yeah. a I'm an Enneagram too. I'm a helper. I'm just like <laughs> everybody's fine. We're people pleasing, all that yeah. kind of stuff. But I have I've grown into that over the years as a type one diabetic, but especially as a type one diabetic mom. Yeah. It's just like I'm I'm not only advocating for myself, but I'm advocating for my future children. Mm -hmm. And that for some reason, I, maybe that's my that is the end, the the personality that I have where it's like, if it affects somebody else, mm -hmm. then it really affects me. Yeah. And so as soon as it affected like my kids, I was just like, I have to make these decisions correctly. Like I can't just be like, it's fine. Whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. Because I used to feel that way. Even if I would like have low blood sugar and we'd be like standing in line, people would be like, well, just tell, just cut and tell them you have low blood sugar. And I'd be like, no, 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 it's fine. Oh, I don't want to bother anyone. Yeah. But as soon as I was pregnant, it was like, every, I need all the things to be okay <laughs> because this baby, and I'm sure everybody feels that way, yeah. but for sure it, t it took that in me that almost the mama bear like yeah I'm going to advocate and each time again I got more and more comfortable with mm -hmm. advocating for myself but then that grew me into like being comfortable to advocate for other people right I guess um how we can let's if we could wrap this up yeah. because again yeah. like I feel like all the I just like you just exude just empowerment and Thank it's you. just such a really beautiful thing. And we haven't really even, and we've talked about a lot of different things and yeah. you know, we've corresponded and, yeah. and everything, but I don't think that we've ever really specifically talked about yeah. you and your condition and, and yeah. that sort of things. And yeah. obviously that doesn't frame you, but it's just, it is a big no, piece of. But it really is. I know we were talking about that earlier. Like it, it, I would not be who I am today without my diagnosis. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times that kind of like negatively shapes someone's life, but yeah. I honestly feel like it positively shaped. Like I've met people, I've supported people as a doula, and I've in spaces that I would never be in yeah. if I was not a type one diabetic. And yeah. and for other, like I'm not even saying just type one diabetes, like I want that for all people who have a diagnosis who feel like they're put in some sort of box. Right. As like a pregnant woman and a mother, mm -hmm. like this is just, you, there's so much more to like the care that you could have. And if you don't feel like comfortable with that team, like surround yourself with that team. Like yeah. it's out there, you just have to keep advocating for yourself and that's yeah. really hard. That is really hard when you feel already like you're a little bit of an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, that's my, like, that's, I think the biggest thing that I often feel with the diagnosis is that, like, my diagnosis is inconveniencing other people. Mm -hmm. So when I also have to, like, make a big fuss to, like, get something that I want, it feels like I'm making e it even worse. Like, yeah. I don't want to inconvenience anyone because I have this illness. Yeah. But if I don't, then I'm just living in that box. Right. Like, and I don't want to live in that box. I want to <laughs> yeah. come out and be better and be stronger and more healthy. And yeah. if I'm not looking for that on my own and not finding that, that team that can rally around me and make me feel that way, yeah. then I'm not, I'm just living in the box Yeah. and I'm staying there. And even your kind of like trial and error too, like mm -hmm. you met people, they weren't right. It was disappointing. You yeah. continue to meet people or to, to like expand on that team or that those people that are, you know, yeah. make empowerment or make that possible. Yeah. So, and even now, like I have so much more education and empowerment for like the next time I right. have a baby. And I'm like, it's so crazy. Cause people are always like, when are you going to, when are you going to have yeah. another baby? And I'm like, I don't know. It's almost like, I don't know because like, I'm so ready for it to be like, so right that I'm almost terrified to go into it again. Cause I'm like, I have so much more information. I have to make sure it's like perfect, which is, it doesn't have to be, but I'm yeah. just, I'm so thankful for even the addition to the right. care team of like, I have so much more information and empowerment, even just over the past 30 ish births that I've witnessed, like it helps me moving forward in my own births and what I can do and how I can better serve other people with like a, cr a chronic illness and a yeah. pregnancy. Hi. <laughs> well, we are so happy to have you here today and happy Thank you. to serve moms in the community. Um, I just, I just really appreciate you Thank and you. sharing your story and if, uh, we'll get people connected to you too, whether yeah. it is as a result of, you know, type one diabetes or just doula work. Yeah. Um, just, I just love to be able can. to walk alongside of people, even if it's not like in a doula sense. Yeah. It's just, oh, we can just in <laughs> Even if it's not like in a doula sense, like just, just having people, like my first pregnancy, even though I had a great care team, I didn't have friends who were moms who with type 1 diabetes. Right. And just to have somebody who totally understands what you're going through, like mm -hmm. I want to be that. I want to be that friend. I want to be yeah. that mom. And I'm looking to start a type 1 diabetes and support and motherhood support group like That's so that awesome. it's just type 1 diabetes and pregnancy but also type 1 diabetes as a mom with kids. Yeah. Cuz there's a certain level of like I have low blood sugar while my kids are screaming that yeah. nobody else gets. 
I, <laughs> that's another layer I can't <laughs> understand. And it's like a guilt on every level yeah. and you're like, oh, I want to care for you. And they're just like, uh, uh, you have low blood sugar again. And you're like, <laughs> I'm like yes, I yes. do. <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I want, I want moms to have that that team around them yeah. that just really gets it. Well, and modeling that for moms is, is you know, such a great start. So yeah. thank you for all that you're thank doing. You. And thank you. And for chatting with me today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs>